Hey, what's up everybody? Rob here from Ram Studio Comics and in today's video I'm going to talk to you about how to get cleaner digital pencils for your drawings. And keep in mind you can support this channel by checking out my Gumroad and watching my classes on Skillshare. So without further ado, let's jump on into today's video. So now let me show you a way that you can get hopefully cleaner pencils. So I often get this question, um, you know, where people are like, how do you get your pencils so clean? Um, you know, what are you doing? And I've got a couple techniques for you. So I've done videos like this in the past, but I want to show you, we're going to use a very basic brush. So this is the darker pencil that comes with Clip Studio Paint. Now, don't worry, this isn't some special great brush that no software other than Clip Studio Paint has, okay? It's really the most basic of brushes. So if I zoom up, I could show you. It's just like a, it's got a bit of a taper to it and a bit of a fade. That's really it. That's what com uh, compromises. That's what this brush consists of, I guess. So it's the ability to get thick to thin, the ability to get light to dark, somewhat. Uh, and then I turn the, the opacity down a bit. You can see that over here. And I, I move that slider around. I like to kind of play with it. It's kind of a wee, you know, so whatever. It's just something that I do when I get bored. So, but when I'm drawn, I adjust it. So if I want it darker, I slide it to more opacity and, you know, you know the drill there. So I just do that and then there's my brush. So the reason why I want to show you with a very basic brush, obviously I have these other ones I've created with, you know, more texture and all that jazz. But what's nice about this one is you get a very clean pencil look. So let me draw something basic for you just to kind of illustrate this. I'm going to do just a, a side profile of a face just because they're easy for me. I don't have to do a whole lot of work up and I can explain to you the process for getting clean pencils. So you see right here, I'm starting with very, very rough pencils. Okay. I'm moving the brush around very sporadically and I'm getting the, the shape and the form of what I'm looking for, but that's it. I'm not, not going for clean lines. Okay. I really stress this on a lot of my videos that I think that you tend to get better work if you allow yourself to not worry about uh, you know clean lines at first you just work at this stage of the work you're trying to get the idea down okay so the idea is I'm, I'm picturing somebody like a, a dark side it's a dark side or dark seed anyways it's not really gonna be him but somebody like him like that villainous side profile look of I'm just super mad and gonna you know do some damage or something you know, so, but right now I'm just getting in that initial uh, series of forms. You know, maybe some of the hints to the uh, shading like this. You know, I want it to be a kind of a dramatic look. So I'll, I'll add some heavier uh, shapes of shadows here and there. But again, really kind of scribbling, you know, over texturizing some parts. Uh, going over lines again. Now, this is the other thing I like about this brush. Since it's translucent like that, I can slowly work up to the intensity of the lines that I want. Okay? And I think that's important. Like, it, you know, I, I don't want, if I'm if I'm inking, you know, I'm, that's the line I get right there. And, and sometimes I'll do that. Sometimes I will actually draw with ink just to kind of practice. Uh, but when I'm in a... Um, a bit more of an uh, explorative mood. <laughs> I'm like trying to find what I really want to be drawn or what I want to see in this image. I'm going to do a lot of light sketching. I'm going to move these uh, shapes and forms around. Uh, I'm going to play around with these concepts. So a lighter brush helps me do that. And again, not worrying too much about line clarity or anything too specific at this point because I really want to find some ideas. Um, let's give them like some kind of helmet piece thing. So yeah, so, so here we go. We got this, I don't know who this dude is, whoever. We just got this character going and I'm going to start texturizing. I want to give them more like, uh, you know, roughed up kind of details and, you know, some things that I can cross hatch. But at first I'm just going to scribble those in. You know, again, get that concept in place. You know, maybe this headpiece thing has got some like techie lines or something, some scrolly kind of uh, 
you know, cross hatching right here, whatever. Okay. So just, just so we have an idea to work from. So this is pretty much how I start, you know, with my drawings. And, you know, I think that if I shared this more, people would go, oh God, your, your pencils aren't so clean. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. But this is what I do. So I'm going to call this just like a step one. I'm going to make a copy to show you that I start here. Something that I, I've been doing lately is I'll actually even blend some of the pencils. And, and I want to show you this because one of my um, pieces that I just did had this. And somebody had mentioned, you know, man, how, how your pencils look so clean. Those, you know, your digital pencils or whatever. Um, or, or maybe they said something like, how do they look so much like traditional? And I think this adds to it because what happens is, I'm a left-hander. I, I smudge through my work a lot. I'm kind of a cross-smudging. What's that word? Cross-smudging? I don't know. Anyways, I smudge. <laughs> That's not what the word means anyways. What I'm too, the word I'm even trying to think of that I can't think of. Anyways, uh, it's um, I smudge through my work a lot. I don't know that it's just because I'm left-handed. It's just the way I draw. So the back of my hand, if I'm working on uh, pencil and paper, back of my left hand is just you know, smudged to crazyville. So what happens is, is my work, obviously on paper, reflects that, right? It's like, I got all these little smudge lines like this. And so the reason why I like doing this is it really makes me feel like I'm working digitally. And I know it sounds, or working traditionally, sorry. And I know it seems kind of silly, like really you purposely smudge your work when it could be cleaner digitally. That makes no sense, Rob. Listen, I'm not here to tell you that everything I do makes sense. Okay, that would just be senseless. senseless. Anyways, but it's what I do. It's, it's what works for me. It's what keeps me in the zone of feeling creative and, and doing my thing. So I'm just, I'm just being real with you folks. That's how I do it. So, so what I do is I'll sometimes smudge this around. And it tends to do this anyways when you draw over it a bunch of times and then soft erase and redraw. You kind of get a similar pattern or a series of effects you know you're kind of building up in a sense you're kind of applying texture to this uh, otherwise relatively 2d line work okay so generally with texture it's like we tend to think like paintings or something um, but you know you texturize a lot when you render when you cross hatch when you throw in these patterns of you know in the background whatever you know so you're still texturizing and uh, I like to do that as much as possible with my 2D work because it, it just seems to, you know, punch up the impact. It seems to look a little more impressive if I think about it that way instead of just looking for, you know, maybe just the perfect line to put down. Um, you know, one of the things I like a lot is when you look at an artist's work and there's like a random line that it makes sense because they're so good at drawing and like you look at it and go, oh, that's cool. That's how they draw their cheekbones or something. But it, it's a line that doesn't really make sense as a cheekbone. So for instance, you know, you might see a line where it's like this. Okay. And I do that. I actually do that in my work. You know, I go like this and you'll see that in the cheeks of my characters a lot. I just think it's kind of neat. It's, this is like a little lightning bolt thing. It's just a style choice. And really, if you look at it closely, it's actually the R from Ram, but you know, whatever. Nobody's, nobody cares about that, but I kind of see that when I do it. And so, um, you know, a lot of times you can just throw these lines. You don't have to make them make entire sense. It's like you're trying to implement style. You're trying to implement, um, I don't know, just a, just a, a calling card in your work, I guess. Like, you know, I always look at it like every line you put down is your signature. Okay. The way that you see something the way that you want to you know present it and so it doesn't always have to make perfect sense and and sometimes just the energy of the line in the right spot makes something look really cool it's not that it you know you don't have to think about it and go what does a mouth look like you know what does a nose exactly like? it's got to look just like a nose i mean you could do that at first when you're when you're studying trying to get better but then you know better at the fundamentals and better understanding anatomy and things like that. But after a while, you're, you're just like, no, I want to just draw stuff that looks cool. And maybe it doesn't really look like a nose or doesn't really look exactly like an eye. But, you know, based on the way I, you know, put it all together, it works. You, you can tell what it is. Uh, some of my favorite styles are very skewed in that way. And that's, that's kind of why I, 
I guess I wanted to say that in today's video that that's why um, experimentation like that can be so much fun and and uh, you know you're probably just going to develop this really cool style anyways and then um, people are going to love your style because they're yeah I guess I guess I see it that way with comics because if you want realism you can go paint portraits you know what I mean like you can just do realism and and see how good you can get at that but with comics it's not about really making things look like they really look it's about you implementing your style and uh letting that be your guide so so yeah so you know you see at this point it's still pretty crude i really don't know what i want to do down here but something i want this to kind of come down and maybe attach something else i think that'd be kind of neat um but if you take it from you know that first point it was very crude very you know messy and it's still messy but it's starting to make a little bit more sense starting to clean up um, I don't know that I would keep blending unless I was going to make this more of a um, digital painting you know, maybe little bits and pieces like I would almost use the blend at this stage like an eraser uh, again you don't have to do this you could just use your soft erase just uh, different ways to kind of look at the process I really like the blending brush inside of uh, Clip Studio Paint Mongo Studio. It's just, it's like, it works the way a blending brush should work. This is why uh, I do a lot of painting in this software because it just, it's easy to paint when, when things blend so easily. So, and so quickly, then there's like no lag to this blending brush, which is just amazing. Um, so, you know, something like that. I'll push this information back. Actually, I'll just do a soft read. So I need to figure out what I want this piece to be. I kind of like this idea that it comes down, maybe attaches to the shoulder piece or something. Yeah, so still trying to figure out what I want to see there. Okay, so now let's make one more copy of this. And again, I just want to show you in the, in the way that I would generally work, and that is to do a lot of scribbling, a lot of uh, searching for ideas, basically. You know, get out the real messy stuff, obviously, that's just going to distract and make it look like, uh, you know, like it makes no sense or whatever. So get that stuff out of there. I'm thinking it's more of a full headpiece and then this little neck design. So what, I'm, whoop, what the? Sorry, folks, a little technical difficulty there. Okay, so at this stage of the work, actually, I'd probably soft race a little bit more. At this stage of the work, this is where I can really clean it up, okay? And I can really just go to ink, and I've been practicing that as well, but uh, the purpose of this video is to show you how to get cleaner pencils. Now, at this stage of it, notice too that I keep the brush a little bit bigger, so I can get a line that's very thin and very pronounced, okay? All in one brush. So I, I generally will size up the brush, and you're going to have to play with your particular, um, you know, if you're using a, a Wacom, uh, you're going to have to get the settings right where you can do that, but you should be able to get a nice variety and control on your brushes uh, so that you're not constantly scaling the brush up and down, which you're going to do that regardless, but uh, you should be able to get a nice versatility in your brush. Now, the other thing that I always try to tell people when they talk about line clarity is practice throwing the brush more. So you'll see me occasionally like, you know, kind of try to throw one line like, you know, from the top of this bump of the nose down to the, the tip of the nose. That, that was one line. One line there. A couple little lines because of the uh, the bends. Actually, I want this to come down over to here. Like that. One line there. One line there. So generally, you know, if you think that way, you, you're going to get cleaner lines. Now, it's going to look, the character is going to start looking and feeling a bit more angular because of that and the way I'm doing it. Um, I guess I could still consider these uh, not angular lines, organic lines, because I'm I'm curving them, uh, but it's going to kind of chisel it out a bit more. Um, but you really want to practice throwing lines, okay? It's it's just going to make the work look cleaner. Um, you know, a lot of times I'll hit Command Z a few times until I get the right line that I'm looking for. I know uh, you'll notice that with a lot of uh, artists that. Um, you know, especially in speed drawings, I'll notice, the way you notice it is you'll see the line skip. It'll go like this, like this, like this. 
and it's like it's you know reappearing multiple times and all of a sudden they'll move on to something else it's because they're throwing the line and they're looking for just the right line um some people are very particular about it um i've watched videos about uh, not about with uh patrick brown and he talks about it he says something in his video like uh you know, i'm very specific about my line and you see him kind of redrawing it over and over and it's snapping back and forth and I think part of that is when you have a very clear idea of what you want to see, then that helps you, right? So as a beginner artist, you might not do that as much because you're like, well, I don't know what line I want to see. So I just kind of throw it down and hope for the best. And But then as you do it more and more, you start to get a little bit better idea of what looks good and what doesn't. Uh, and then, you know, in digital, Command Z becomes your best friend and also your biggest crutch. So you see, I'm, I'm pretty much just tracing what's here now, right? And I'm adding a little bit of style choices to it. Nothing too overly dramatic, but uh, trying not to, I'm trying to improve it as I go. I'm, I'm always trying to look for the next best thing to improve the work as I, as I do this. Uh, again, I might stylize the lines a little bit as I go, like a little, what I call like a hook line. Something like that. Another one right here, that little hook. I like I like that kind of uh, look to the lines. I think it's more interesting. Another thing I do is I'll, I'll fill this in and I'll try to not lift the pin up until I hit this entire area. And uh, it makes a nice smooth uh, value right there, which I like. And then you can also blend that if you want that value to be really smooth. Uh, now that's going to give you an ultra... Um, unrealistic look like that's something you're, you're probably generally only going to do in digital you can do it in traditional you can use blending stumps and all that but it's just something I tend to do and see more in uh, uh, digital work uh, but keep that in mind if you really want that nice clean look you can do that you can blend your uh, values together you, know, you can make it look very clean at this stage if you want a couple forehead wrinkles. Shadow onto this area. Some little tapered lines here. So I'm trying to throw these lines and make them a little bit thicker to the one side. So just style choices there. Nothing too groundbreaking or overly new same old same old there shadow under the nose oh, that's kind of weird doesn't it doesn't it just put some lines here tiny little lines when in doubt throw in some tiny lines and you know as far as getting perfect parallel lines in the way that I just did them, almost flawless, perfect, not really. Anyways, the, the only real answer to that is lots of practice, you know, the, the answer nobody likes. Because um, I remember when I used to use a ruler to draw tiny little lines. Um, it's kind of sad now looking back that I ever did that, but I did. It was back in the rapidiograph days. I would take a, when I was inking my work, I would use a rapidiograph and a ruler and I would always manage to smudge the uh, ink, which was uh, very frustrating. And at some point you just start going, nah, you know, I'm just gonna not care if they're not as perfect as I imagine them to be. Um, but then what happens is the better you get with your hand control by doing it over and over and over, uh, you start get to get the lines that you want. You start to get cleaner and cleaner lines. Um, some techniques for that other than just doing the work obviously are probably um, drawing a couple dots on the page and then trying to connect the dots perfectly with the line uh, so that's an exercise I see people doing I'll be honest I never really did that exercise but it's something worth trying I take nothing off the table uh, I think that my style generally um, forced me to get better at creating all these lines because I render a lot you know, not particularly in this example, there's some rendering, but uh, in a lot of my pieces, 
you can see like on my portfolio sites you can see i do a lot of rendering like some pieces i just pretty much go crazy with it so you know in turn that's lots of hours of creating a bunch of lines uh, you develop hand control through that repetition um, but yeah it's just really you know how much of it you want to see in your work some people avoid it and some people practice it daily yeah and just so you know upcoming we're going to be doing more hand videos i've been wanting to uh, get back on that like hands are another thing that you know you're always just trying to get better at and uh yeah i really feel like i need to bring you guys some more hand videos so we'll be doing that asap might even be the next couple videos So again, throw in the lines, build the shapes. Here I was kind of picturing this um, shape coming down like this over to here. Just playing around with this uh, design of this, trying to figure it out. Something like that. And something else I want to make sure to mention, like I've talked about how, you know, I do this to fill in this entire area and I'm doing this without lifting the pin off the canvas, right? Just to get this clean value. And in some ways it might just be counterproductive, right? Like really you just, can you just scribble that all in? Does it matter that it's all a similar value or couldn't you select the area and just fill it in and then tone the layer back to a gray, right? There's other ways to get it done and probably more effective ways. Uh, but sometimes I do things that are a little bit harder for me to accomplish uh, just because I'm challenging myself. And, and, you know, I don't know that it matters a lot in this specific area that I'm showing you. But what I do want to make sure to mention about that is that's kind of the nature of being an artist. Like you have to challenge yourself to draw things that you can't draw. Uh, so like I mentioned, I'm going to be bringing more hand videos. Hands are a perfect example. Hands and feet. You can't stand drawing them. But they make you a better artist. They make you draw something that's just complex and ultra dynamic and just not easy to draw for so many reasons. Now, the other great thing about that is that when people look at your work, they immediately go, wow, that person can draw hands. And the thing that I've noticed too with that is generally when people can draw hands and feet and things like that, they generally can draw, you know, throughout the rest of their work really well. And I think that what's happening there is mainly it's somebody that's just went for the things that are the more difficult in their work. I don't think it's that people are inherently just good at drawing hands and feet. I don't think that that exists. Now, you know, you could argue with me about it and say, no, I know this one person, they draw hands and feet really well and they can't draw anything else or whatever. I mean, I just think that most people, when they go after something, when they focus on uh, the things that are most difficult in their work, it generally shines through in almost every other area of their work. So uh, again, that's one of those things where you just have to identify with certain areas in your work that might be holding you back. In this case, drawing you know cleaner line work. And clean line work is a byproduct of just you know really drawing a lot of lines, but then also you know reverse engineering your process and going, well, I'm going to practice drawing lines uh, faster. I'm going to practice drawing them. You know, I'm going to fill up this entire page of thick to thin lines because my cross hatching is just a little bit weak, you know. I'm going to ink over this uh, this already inked work. I'm going to turn it to a blue line and I'm going to ink over top of it like a Scott Williams or a Danny Mickey or any of these amazing inkers that you, you admire. And you say, well, I'm going to ink over their work, you know, just to study the choices they made. It's not uh, easy to do that. It's not uh, I wouldn't say it's not fun. I always enjoy it, but some people might think it's not even fun. Like they just want to create. But I can promise you this: if you do that, your lines will look better. You you will get a better, uh, you know, comfort and confidence with your own lines. Uh, but you have to sit down and do that, and it's making time to do that. And and that's where sacrifice comes in. With anything that you draw, anything that you you um, you go after in life, there's going to be some sacrifice. Sometimes a sacrifice isn't evident, it's very minuscule, so you overlook it. Other times it's very apparent 
and then you might compromise what you're after because the sacrifice is too great. In art, the sacrifice is almost always your time and it's your most valuable asset. Imagine that. But um, you, you have to do that. You have to say, well, you know what? I'm just going to suck it up and I'm going to draw until my fingers hurt. And if I want clean lines, I'm going to study other artists that have clean lines and I'm going to see the choices they're making and I'm going to emulate it and I'm going to recreate it and I'm going to copy it and I'm even going to trace it. And, you know, you're going to get better through that. Uh, I don't think that that's always the popular answer that people, you know, the answer people want to really hear. Uh, but it's the truth. Like, there's a lot of times I've inked work that I don't really want to be an inker. I mean, I wouldn't mind it, but I, I'm, it's not my goal. Uh, but I'll ink it just because I want to get better at creating lines. I want to see the different patterns that they make with cross-hatching, with their pencils, and with their inks. Um, and, and like I said, I will take inked work, convert it to a blue line, and ink it again because I'm really, at that point, I'm really trying to study what the anchor did with those lines, how they made those crisp, clean, you know, beautiful lines. And, you know, how can I do that? How can I at least assimilate <laughs> some of that into my work? You know, like, like I'm part Borg over here. But anyways, I just want to give you lots of ideas of how to look at this stuff. It's not always just, you know, the, the, the easiest answer is just practice it's not the answer anybody wants to hear it's the truth but it's how do you practice right that's what what young artists always want to know how do you practice and flat out you study people that know more than you and if you can't ask them questions and a lot of them aren't available to just pick their brain uh unless they have a youtube channel you can comment in the section below uh then you basically recreate their work i mean to me that's the quickest way to get a leg up in in this kind of work so I'll bring this one to a close. I hope you've enjoyed this. More content's on the way very soon. As always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and bye for now.